Today, we're gonna take advantage of High Level's brand new store feature and build a digital e-commerce store in just a few minutes. So stay tuned and build along with us. All right, just a few things to note that I wanna make sure everybody's clear on. Now, they've come a pretty long way. Actually, super happy that they did this. And a lot of people that are out there that are using multiple storefronts and Shopify and everything else, those are still gonna be a little bit better because they still have a lot of the automations for the actual stores. But this comes pretty darn close. The only thing it's not doing right now is having a shipping element. But in talking to the developers, I know that's fast and coming. They're gonna to connect to some of the major shipping companies like ShipStation, and they're working through that now. That's literally the only thing that it's lacking. Without further ado, let's jump right in and start Start building this store. So right as of now, it is currently only available under websites. So when you click on the websites, we're going to start a new site, right? And I actually, we're going to do this mad design t-shirts just because I got a little bit to make it super easy, right? I'm going to make a quick little website. It's going to start me with the home page, And then when it starts with the home page, I'm going to immediately add a feature. Now I'm going to come over here to mad design t-shirts. And when I come in, obviously there's no new page here. I am gonna create a home page for now, all right? And we're gonna do the path is gonna be home, all right? And we have no URL because again, we're just gonna make a mock-up, right? So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna create from blank. There we go. I am immediately gonna go over to the left-hand side on the new funnel builder. And in the left, I'm gonna hit add a store. With doing this, it's gonna activate the store element inside the website, and it's gonna give us a couple pages. And I'm gonna pull back out to show you what those pages are. The other thing that I wanna make sure you guys fully understand right early on is that this works in conjunctions with the payments tab inside the menu because you're gonna to have to add the products inside of payments in order for them to show up dynamically. Now, what I mean by dynamically, as you see, when it brings in over the store element, it's bringing in all these different items. These are items that are just pre-fit. Only the live view will show you the products that are gonna be hosted inside your store. And I'm gonna go through that and how to add them. All right, so if I come in here, let me just kind of back up and show you the pages that were added. First page, which is gonna be the store, the store page itself which is the product, we'll just call it like the overall front and it's gonna have the dynamic element of where the pages are gonna be. I have the product list page and I'm just gonna kinda click through them. This is gonna be where all the products are gonna be listed, which we just showed you before. Then there's gonna be the actual product, like actual place, like for every product that you have, it's gonna have its own individual page and you're gonna be able to modify things around it. The customizations right now won't allow necessarily a lot to do in there unless you're doing some major CSS, but it does give the ability of adding multiple images, a short description, description and giving something as far as variance, which is very, very important when you're running an e-commerce store. So before the problem is even if you had like an e-commerce store, you would have to use funnels and you would only have the order form, but you didn't have the ability of adding any variance. And now they added that. I'm going to show you how to build that out too. So, so far we have the product list page. We have the actual product details page. We have the cart and you're going to see how this kind of looks. This is going to have the checkout on the right and then the products always on the left. And you notice you can add quantities and take away quantities. All right. And then I'm going to come back out of here. Just kind of want to go over the pages so you see it. The other thing is here is your actual checkout page where you're going to put in your information, even pretty much have a discount and so forth and so on a coupon. It kind of has everything dynamically built in so you can see where everything is. And then the last but not least, you're going to have final page here, which is going to be just your thank you page where everybody goes in after the purchase, right? So now with that all being said and done, I have to add products to the page. So I'm going to come back over here. I've added two products and I'm going to show you how you quickly, just for a test mock-up, if you guys wanted to do a little mock-up to play around with this, how you can create some cool products using ChatGTP and the new DALI feature. So I'm going to go over to the left-hand side. I'm going to go over to payments. I'm going to go over to products. Now, if you come in here, I've already made this little cow t-shirt. And when you come in and you build the product out, you're going to notice that it's going to have this include an online store, your title and your description is really going to matter this time because this is the description that's going to pull into that dynamic element. Same thing with all the different pictures that you're going to have here. And you're going to have the one you're going to want to pick that's going to be the featured in the center. Along with this, this is going to be a physical good. It's going to be a one-time price. And then you're going to have variants like size and color. So for instance, if I wanted to add a variant here, I would come in here. And the first variant, let's just say I would do color and it would be black, white, red, just to give you an idea. Okay. I would add another variant and this would be size, right? You're going to have your X small, all right, your small, your medium and your large. Okay. And X large, there we go. And we're going to hit done. Now I have these different variants and everything else red and it automatically, you notice it does the black small and it kind of separates all of them, which is great, which is what you want to have. And then if you want to put any additional information, it would just be here. But again, 
this is something that was already pre-created. Now, let me tell you what I did just to kind of get a quick little mock-up store kind of going. So if you have ChatGTP4 and you have the new paid version, you have the access to Dolly 3, at least most of us do. Now, it's in beta, but if you come in here and you say something, give me a t-shirt mock-up with Groundhog fighting the guy, pulling him out of the hole for Groundhog's Day. All right, it'll just be funny. While that's pulling up, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start this product, right? So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna create a product and I'm gonna automatically include it inside the online store. This will actually be pretty funny. Hopefully this doesn't break because sometimes this is still beta, so it does tend to go down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use ChatGTP4 to create a t-shirt design. I'm gonna use it to populate the title and the description. And then if I need other images, uh, going on day shirt to showdown. I think that's hilarious right here. So I'm gonna grab this one. I think that's pretty cool. It says, you know, obviously misspellings, but that's okay. I mean, that's a pretty decent design. <laughs> I think it's actually pretty funny. So I'm just gonna do a groundhog. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna have ChatGTP. I'm gonna X out of this. Write t-shirt description for option number two. And it's gonna go ahead and write that. Fantastic, it's gonna create all that. So I'm gonna come in here. This is gonna be Groundhog Day. All right, grab the description. Again, we could have some fun with this. I'm just trying to build this quick so you guys can see it. Come in here, I'm gonna drop that in the description. I got my image. We would do several images, right? So I'm gonna upload the image here. Click on Groundhog Day, boom. Now I got a little featured image. This is gonna be a physical good. One time, 1999, variant, same thing. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna do color, and it's gonna be red, black, and blue. All right, we're gonna hit done. We're gonna add another variant like size. Again, X small, medium, large, X large, right? And you can always go back and add some and everything else. That's the cool part about it. I'm gonna hit done. All right, all of these are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And now what I'll have is, cause I've already created some other shirts again, just a quick little thing, just in case like you wanted some ideas and play around with this a little bit. So you can kind of get used to it, right? So now that I have this saved, I'm gonna go ahead and go back. I'm gonna go to my store. So I'm gonna go to sites. All right, inside of sites, I'm gonna go to my website and I have my bad design t-shirts. Now I have to design around the actual t-shirt because remember this is dynamic. So what I'm gonna do is, as you can see here, if I click inside the actual dynamic element, it doesn't have any of my shirts yet because it will only show this in the live or the preview. But what it does have, I have the ability of changing the buttons, the color, the background color, and then I have some font options here. Now, obviously we're gonna get more as this kind of progresses, but honestly, this is a pretty good start. And if I wanna go back to that product page, I hit manage products and it's gonna take me there. In the meantime, we also have advanced for borders, shadow, and we can do custom classes if we wanna do CSS. Now, for anybody that's really designing stores, you're probably gonna go very heavy in CSS to kind of get it out there. But for now, just for purposes of showing you this and that this is active, we're gonna keep moving forward. So for instance, I would just come over here. I would do uh, sections. I would add a full width section at the top, add a logo of some sort, right? Make it super simple or a headline. It's kind of up to you. Grab an image, come over here to the right-hand side on the new builder. Remember everything on your new builder is you select the items on the left and you customize them on the right. A little different than what we were used to before, but it follows the same way. Nine times out of 10, if there's ever an update inside a high level, everybody starts to panic. Everything is just usually there that was there before with maybe one or two new additional features, but usually they change the UI to make more sense based on a lot of UI testing. And I trust them into doing this because they do do it right. And it's just good to know that whenever something changes, don't panic. Nine times out of 10, it is because it's located somewhere else, but it's still there. So you just gotta kind of spend a little time to finding it, right? So I have a Maya Designs logo. That's huge, we don't want that. So we would do like 150, perfect. And then I could probably add like a little headline. If I come over here, I'm gonna grab my little headline here and I'll Mad Designs t-shirts, all right? Again, not looking for anything else, but this is something I would do. And then I could put like a cool background in here, leave this dynamic item alone and maybe even do a background design and so forth. But again, just trying to keep it super simple. Let's just add one more bottom one all the way at the end. So if I grab it in sections, Boom, come in here. And then this will be our terms and service. We add a column, you know, just a quick, whoop, add a column, probably do a paragraph and it'll be terms, privacy, policy. And then we would just link to our policy page. And then we have, you know, 2000, ooh, not 23, right? 2023, mad designs. And then we put a little fake copyright sign or whatever it is, but you got to get the point, make this all one big link, doesn't matter. And I can even make it a different color down here just so then it stands out. Don't know why I went there, but like, let's grab that. Whole roll down, don't fight me. There we go. 
And then I would just make this like a blue color for now, just so then you guys, we can keep this moving. And again, not a design session, more of like the, this thing up and going session. So I'm gonna kick in here. And again, we wanna do it to the right and we would just do like a color, perfect. That's all I want for now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now, for you to see the preview and how these shirts will pull over, check this out. These are the t-shirts, pretty simplistic, but it's up and running. And then all I gotta do is click on this. And once I click on this, you see it's got the cool little, you know, wording on it. And I could show more, like if it's got or less. And if I have other t-shirt pictures, they could all be listed here, which I think is pretty cool. But again, pretty quickly to get that up, right? Now, let's go ahead and go through a full transaction, right? So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna go in the preview side. I'm gonna make sure that this website is on test mode so I can test it with Stripe. So you could see the entire purchase automation, how it kind of happens. So I'm not gonna make it live as far as that, but I am gonna put payment mode in test so I can completely go at this and we can see what it looks like has an experience for the customer. So let me go ahead and click on the product list page because remember, that's probably where I'm gonna start my store. And then from here, I'm gonna go to preview. And we know when we're in preview because remember, the dynamic element changes to whatever I put in the store. I only have three selections right now, which is perfectly fine. So just know that as you put in more and more, you, you will have more pages. And I think it's in blocks to six as of now, and we're probably gonna get some customizations later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick my one of my shirts here. Awesome, I'm gonna go ahead and add to cart. I'm gonna come in here. Well, actually this doesn't have a variance, so you know what? Let's go back, because I wanna show the variance. So come in here, awesome. I have the black, I can pick in large. I'm gonna go ahead and I have these two. I'm gonna view my cart or I can continue shopping and I can just go back. Again, you would have a back button. There's some cool things that you can do here, but I think I'm good here. I can add to cart again. And then I'm gonna go ahead and you would obviously have cart and everything else on top. We're gonna go ahead and view the cart so we can X out, right? So we have here, I can add, I can subtract and I'll automatically subtract. It will take the person away or take the item away, I should say, and we're ready to go, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and test the product. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna go to the preview of the page. Again, we're gonna go to the product. I'm gonna go ahead and add one of my uh, cow t-shirts here. I'm gonna hit add to cart. Perfect, the cart comes out. I'm gonna take these away. Awesome, go to checkout. Now I could go ahead and add a coupon if I had a coupon code, but I didn't turn it on. But in the meantime, we're just gonna run a test card through. 4242, all the way across the board. All right, future date, future expiration, boom. And then any zip code doesn't really matter. All right, and then from here, again, just we're gonna do some fake info. All right, 1-800-505-1212. Fake address, street, United States, boom. Doesn't matter. And then fake city. Okay. All right. Boom. And now that that's all said and done, I'm going to go ahead and make a payment. Now, what's really cool about this is there is a fulfillment piece of this. And again, it goes to continue shopping. You're having a shipping address. Everything's all set and good. What's really cool is if you now go to payments and you go to your orders, you can now see the order here and you can see that it's unfulfilled, which in a physical product, you're gonna to wanna to fulfill it, right? Now, this is the part where this is not automated, but you can create an automation, and I'm gonna show you how, where you can automatically either put it into an Excel spreadsheet that you can give it to a shipper, or you can connect through Zapier to some like ship station or something else that is very similar to that, right? But in the meantime, if you're gonna do this manually and you're gonna like basically send it off, oop, let go back because I hit the wrong thing. You're gonna hit in the three little dots here, view the order, and you're gonna notice a whole fulfillment section down here where you put fill items and you can put enter the tracking number, the shipping carrier, the tracking URL, and then notify the customer. A little bit of a manual process, but definitely not a bad thing, especially if you're just starting out and you're just trying to get a quick little pop-up store. So other than having another software where you could just kind of like maybe do this one part manually, this is a really good kind of way to kind of get started in an e-commerce shop for your little business or whatever it is but it's definitely a cool way to get a store up and running quickly. So now that we have the store kind of pretty figured out, and again, you can always go back in there and customize. Now let's figure out how we're actually gonna get the orders fulfilled. Right now, I mentioned early on that this is still kind of new. You are getting an automated receipt inside the payments area. Remember, just to kind of recap, if you go to settings, you enable the receipt, you're now able to have an automatic receipt go out to the customer, and you can templatize the template inside that with the receipt order and all that information that's going in there. Now, the really cool thing about that also is, is that remember, all your orders, now if you wanted to manually download these particular orders, all you would come in here is hit the little download button right here, and you could prep all your orders and just send it off to your shipper. There's a lot of multitude of different ways to get these kind of fulfilled. But then you can also create an automation. Again, this is gonna be probably getting a little bit better as time goes on, but for instance, I come over here and I created a little store folder, right? And inside of here, I would create a workflow and I would do continue. And then from the continue, I would just do 
t-shirt order. And basically I would come over here, I would do order submitted. Now I can specialize and go down to the product if I wanna give them special tags, or I can do the entire order like this, order submitted, which will trigger on every order coming from here. Now, if I have other different websites and funnels and stores and everything else, and I wanna segregate the orders, what I would have to do then is create an if else, create a branch and we'll do t-shirt store, okay? Come in here, we could just do funnel and it'll actually funnel or website just to be clear, because there's my mad design t-shirts. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now, any order coming from here, I can now do a webhook that would basically come in here. And that webhook could be to Zapier, to ShipStation, to a couple of other retailers out there that can do this. So basically you would grab whatever webhook you would have and you would just send it out and it should have all the order information, including the order items, which is what you're gonna need in order to get it out to whoever you need to. So I recommend Zapier because Zapier is gonna have a lot of the common connections, but a really cool way to get the order automatically fulfilled. Again, if you wanted to come in here and on the t-shirt store, you wanted to customize it a little bit further, I would probably save this one because this is gonna be the t-shirt order. And then I would just like tag it if like they were coming in and I wanted to like basically give them a label if these just sort of the cow t-shirt because I wanted like maybe they're cow lovers, right? So I would come over here, I would do order place and then I would do the actual product. So I would say cow t-shirt. And again, you wouldn't do this because you might have like a gazillion t-shirts or maybe you would because you have different categories and you want to capture it. Again, order submitted because that's going to have the order information. And then I'm going to come up in here, global product is, and then the cow shirt. And then maybe here, I just wanna give them a quick little tag, you know, that they order the cow t-shirt or the cow lovers or whatever it is. So then I can segment and later on, I can send them an email or tag them or maybe put them on a special promotion and like refer my other cow t-shirt. So a lot of really cool things you can do here, but again, what a great beginning. I'm glad this was helpful. I hope you can get your quick little store up, but how cool is this? You can create another little revenue stream of anything you want pretty much to selling a physical item and you can kind of test it out, run some ads to it, and there you go. So hopefully this helps and we'll see you in the next one.